Hello everyone, my name is Yael and I am your intern this year. I wanted to wish everyone an early Shabbat Shalom and share some thoughts on this week's Parsha. Parsha Vayera is neither here nor there. We are no longer in Shemot, where God first remembers B'nai Israel and promises to free them, but we're not yet in next week's Parsha, Parsha Bo, where B'nai Israel is finally liberated. Last week's Parsha is the promise. Next week's Parsha is the result. And this week, we have to experience the process. Despite the power of the ten plagues, I find myself antsy as I read through the Parsha. What is the point of this lengthy and repetitive narrative? Is there a purpose to the immense amount of detail? Why did it have to take so long? I'm reminded of a story that I heard as a child. A young boy finds a magical spool of thread and realizes that when he pulls the string, time elapses at a faster rate. He uses this magical device to evade punishment at school, being scolded by his parents, even boring lectures in college. While he is delighted at first, he realizes as a young man with little to show in life that although it was easier to avoid uncomfortable situations, he loses the texture and pleasure of learning and growing. His gains feel false. We encounter the value of the process in our Parsha by seeing B'nai Israel's growth and learning through the redemptive process. Last week, we saw an enthusiastic and receptive B'nai Israel imagining the long dreamed of redemption. However, by this week's Parsha, B'nai Israel are crushed by a shortness of breath and hard work and are no longer able to listen to Moshe's messages. The shine of God's promise to liberate them has quickly worn off without the results in sight. However, over the course of the 10 plagues and redemption process, B'nai Israel slowly gain confidence in God through the repetitive show of God's strength. Process can build more meaningful relationships, both divine and human. Rabbi Seth Farber suggests that this process is not about building relationships, but about building empathy. He notes a linguistic tie to a story earlier in our history. In the very last Pasuk of last week's Parsha, Parsha Shmot, God promises, now you will see what I will do to Paro, for with a mighty hand I will send them out, and with a mighty hand I will thrust them from the land. Rabbi Farber brings our attention to the other place in Tanakh, the only other place, where the word shalach and garesh are used as a prayer, when Sarah tells Avraham, garesh ama hazot ve'at bana, cast out this servant and her child, referring to Hagar and Yishmael. And although Abraham regrets having to exile Hagar, he does. The Torah tells us four short psukim later, Vayishalchecha, he sends Hagar away. In simplistic form, this is the narrative of Abraham enslaving an Egyptian woman, only to send her cruelly into the desert at his wife's behest. Generations later, Abraham's descendants find the power structure reversed, as they are now enslaved by the Egyptians. Rabbi Farber suggests B'nai Israel need to know how it feels to be thrust out. They need to experience what Hagar's endured to understand redemption is not an easy thing. Through this process, B'nai Israel realize the extent of Avraham's choice to thrust out Hagar, and by doing so, gain an empathy for others. This is perhaps the antecedent for the commandment to love and support the ger, the stranger, because we were once strangers in Egypt. We must endure the redemptive process to transition from oppressor to ally. If anyone could have produced the magic string to quickly pass through uncomfortable situations, it would be God. However, it seems that this is a conscious divine choice not to expedite the process. Rabbi Farber concludes that the process is meant to teach that through our own painful experience, we learn not to allow others to suffer no matter who or where they are in life. Rabbi Grummet explores yet another benefit to process. He too asks about the purpose of such a lengthy and descriptive process. Why not give an abbreviated recounting of the experience? Rabbi Grummet notes two other biblical narratives that are also lengthy and repetitive. The first is the Mabul, the flood, and the next is the destruction of Sodom. Rabbi Grummet observes that each narrative describes a time where the moral corruption of society is so complete that God feels there is no choice but to have what Rabbi Grummet calls God's dramatic intervention into the world. 
At this point, when society becomes so corrupt, there is no space for subtlety. God must demonstrate in a show of great power that immoral behavior is so completely unacceptable. The process in all of its lengthy detail is important for imparting a lasting message. Process can be painful. It can feel interminable and at times unnecessary. However, as we see through these three interpretations of process, it is essential for growth. B'nai Israel develop a stronger relationship with God, learning to trust a great and powerful God through the process of redemption. B'nai Israel also develop an empathy for the stranger that will continue, hopefully, throughout our history. Lastly, the process allows both B'nai Israel then and us as contemporary readers today to truly understand the uninhibited devastation that moral corruption can bring. May we all merit to gain strength and wisdom from our own processes, both nationally and personally, to continue to develop as a strong, faithful, empathic, and moral community. Shabbat Shalom.